Greetings, I am Mac for a day, the director of the Spacing Guild. This is the Waking Titan Report number three. Uh, and this one is a doozy. This is, I have over five and a half pages of notes on this one. So there's a lot of stuff for me to cover. But first I want to just mention that um, these videos are not meant to, well, they're just meant to be my first-hand account of the events of the Waking Titan alternate reality game. They're, they're not meant to be a perfectly detailed and in-depth um, account of every single thing that happened and went on. Um, but since I'm a participant in Waking Titan, I can give my first-hand account of my experiences with it and everything that went on and how I contributed to it because I did contribute to it in a somewhat significant way this time um, although I'm not totally sure if I if what I did was a good thing but I did do something but I'll go over that later um, but for a really detailed um, account of the phases of Waking Titan please watch Kyle Culver's videos about them and I will um, uh, uh, once again, I will link a, um, I will put a link in my, in the comments of this video for my playlist of Waking Titan videos that, um, where Kyle Culver's videos are, where he gives a really perfectly detailed, uh, explanation of every little thing that goes on. But, um, this is just going to be my account of everything that happened with me in it. So, this is about Superlumina, superlumina-6c.com. It's a new website involved in the Waking Titan um, ARG. So, first thing that happened on Thursday, June 29th, 2017, superlumina-6c.com started to look glitched. Um, normally, the, uh, the websites for Waking Titan that haven't come out yet will have we'll just have this this kind of cityscape picture and it will say you're not ready for the you're not ready for this yet be patient so it's just basically the error message that tells you that the website isn't up yet well on Thursday the one for superlumina started instead of saying you're not ready for this it says it said, ready, you're not for yet this. And some of the letters were replaced with numbers. And it, um, normally when a website for Waking Titan starts to go live, it'll say, uh, begin second sequence or begin third sequence and so on. But this one said, begin sequence negative 16.0E998112. Oh, oh, it was, yeah, negative 16 and then a bunch of other numbers. So, and then it said process degraded rebooting. And it also said copyright Superlumina 2017. So that was weird. <clears throat> and that kind of got us all to paying attention to the Superlumina site. Because it was pretty early that, that something would happen. Usually it's not till Friday that the website starts to update. And this was happening on Thursday. So then the next day, Friday, June 30th, it changed, the number on it changed to negative 32 point and then some other numbers. And it, it, it instead of saying Superlumina 2018, it said copyright Superlumina 2018. So that was our first clue that this was going to have something to do with a time warp, like a message from the future or something. But we didn't know yet um, how all that was going to come into play. And then uh, at that same time that the website changed again, people started to get emails. The people who had linked their email account to WakingTitan.com, they started to get emails, including myself. I got mine. I got my email later on. And there were actually four different emails that people that people received. Um, they were pretty much the same except they each had some different codes on them. And the the email that I got, uh, the title of the email said, Update Error Waking, Waking Titan. 
and it was from Old Gods. And, the, and inside the email had the Atlas logo, the same Atlas logo that was on Cobra TV's cassette tape cover. And it said, Sequence Break Error, J. And J was one of the parts of a code that, we, that people put together from all the emails. Um, and there was also a link to a type form. And there was also another code in the left-hand corner of the email that was a whole bunch of numbers, which people also decoded, which I'll talk about later. But the type form link led to Mercury subroutine two of three. Now, if you watched my other video, um, you know that the Mercury subroutine one of three happened last week. And that was basically, uh, well, it ended up awarding 80 um, Steam keys for No Man's Sky to people. Um, so, of course, people were pretty excited about that, that this might be another contest that would award something. And so Mercury Subroutine 2 of 3, the answer choices for it weren't just simple numbers like last time. Like last time it was like 16, 41, 80, and so on. But this time they were really complicated numbers like 222 02 or something like that. Um, and people believed that the numbers were actually color profiles. Um, and so there were five different choices and five different col colors that could be um, found with the color profiles. So after more searching um, on the codes that we found from the emails and such, um, people came up with different things from the codes that were clues like the Battle of Hastings, uh, Royal Society, which is like uh, the British science, like high society science club or whatever, and also Korea. And the letters in the email, like the J that was on my email, combined to make a link to an Im Imgur image of a math formula. And that ma math formula translated to 256. So we had all these clues and we didn't know how they would give us the answer that we needed to vote for on the type form. So one thing that people came up with was the number 256 from the math formula. There are 256 galaxies in No Man's Sky. After the 256th galaxy, all the galaxies after that are copies of the 256th galaxy. Somebody tried this, they used a, um, an exploit or a glitch in the game and they traveled very quickly through all the galaxies. And they went to Galaxy 256 and named a star and planets and stuff like that. Then when they went to Galaxy 257 and went to the same star, the same star had the same name and the planets had the same names that they had given to it. So we that's how we discovered that Galaxy all the galaxies after 256 are just copies of galaxy 256. So the galaxy the, the unique the unique galaxies stop at galaxy 256. Um, so we thought that that might be a clue since we got the number 256 and the the light at the center of the galaxy in galaxy 256 is pink. And so that made people think that the choice on the type form that was for the color pink might be the answer, and that was the letter C. So since a lot of people on eTARC were saying that was the correct, correct answer, I decided to post on the No Man's Sky subreddit asking people on there and giving them the link to the type form, asking them to vote for C, um, which was the color pink. So... Um, and by this time, the Superluminous site um, had updated and, and was starting to show um, the percentages for the voting. So as people kept voting, C started to increase, um, thanks to the people on Reddit that listened to my post. And so basically, that, that was the main way I contributed to this phase, was I got people on Reddit to vote for C. But like I said, I still don't know for sure if it was the right answer, if, if it was a good thing that I had people do that. But, um, 
and so so the percentage for C started to go up, but then other people started to insist that the answer was actually E for red because it seemed to be related to the other clues, like the Battle of Hastings um, had like a commander that had a nickname with, with the word red in it, and the Royal Society's crest was red, and the flag for Korea is red. So people were starting to say that that I was wrong and the other people that thought it was pink was wrong. But by then it was too late. Um, C was up to like 40 something percent and there wasn't, I don't think there was enough time to change the answer. Uh, because when C reached 51 percent votes, the voting stopped and Superlumina said that it was completing the data set and the type form changed so that it said that it had identified a hundred targets and during this during this time the superlumina oh yeah during this time the superlumina page turned pink so that was kind of funny because people were saying maybe it doesn't matter what we choose maybe it'll just um, just change the color of the website and it did the superlumina website turned pink while it was processing the data um, so it may have not mattered what we chose, it may have just chose what color it turned, and we just needed to vote for it in order to complete the data. But one thing that we haven't figured out yet is why it, why the type form told us it, it had identified 100 targets, because as far as we know, no one else has gotten any emails, no one's gotten, gotten any more Steam keys. So either they're going to award those to us later, or we were wrong and it wasn't pink and so nobody got any prizes. I don't know. We haven't found out for sure yet. But anyway, um, so the uh, Superlumina page turned pink and then unexpectedly, like an hour later or something like that, suddenly the Superlumina site, um, the full site came online. Um, and you can go you can go to it right now it's superluma superlumina-6c.com um, and it was early because usually the website doesn't go live until Saturday but this time it went live on Friday except it was close oh well it was it was it was Saturday somewhere in the world at the time but um, it was still Friday for me, so it seemed like the website was early. And that, again, w we thought that it tied into this idea of being a message from the future because we received the email early or something. So anyway, um, Superlumina is a company that's developing super advanced technology, one of which being a tachyonic anti-telephone which is a theoretical device that could send messages back in time. So again, there's, there's that idea that um, Superlumina is about sending messages back in time. Um, after searching the site, and you can look at it yourself, I'm not going to go over everything that's on there. There's a lot of weird science stuff on it. Some of it fictional, some of it probably is something that, some things that we are researching right now in science. But uh, after a lot of searching, people found a hidden phone number, which when you called the phone number at the time, it would be a voice, a recording of a woman's voice saying, um, she said, call back later for pickup instructions, be ready. And so we just had to wait then for whenever it would give us pickup instructions. So I went to bed at that time, and then the next morning, um, well, while I slept, the Superlumina broadcast happened on the radio station, and the message from Superlumina claimed that it was a message from the future in um, August of 2017. So, like, one, it, it aired one month after like like one month from now supposedly they they aired this broadcast and sent it back in time to us and it told us to go to superlumina-6c.com so again that's that seems to be what this is all about is uh, a message from the future um and the phone yeah the phone message changed around this time and it gave instructions for a pickup 
at a hotel in London. So we scrambled on the eTARC forums and Reddit trying to find somebody that was in London that could make the pickup. And thankfully, eTARC community member Mules Mariner volunteered to go and make the pickup. And a rather creepy thing that happened was that his, his conversation with the agent that he met for the pickup recorded the conversation. And I am going to try and play the recording for you on this video. I'm going to turn off all my music and sound. And I'm going to call the number because the phone number that we that they found on Superlumina now has the recording on it. So I am going to call it and play the message. Yes. You have a passcode for me? I do. Mm -hmm. What is it? Sixteen. Why did you decide on 16? It was the first passcode for waking time. All right. Were there any other answers in consideration? There were. Uh, Orion, Hyperion. Mm -hmm. um, I need to look. I imagine. <laughs> You've come to some trouble. We appreciate that. It's been a long way. Oh, it's all right. It's not that important. Is it not that important? Okay. I think I got it then. How did you decide on that answer versus all of the other answers? I don't know. I'm part of the community and they need somebody to come to the job. Why did you trust their decision over your own decision? Why did I trust theirs? Because we're together. We're working together to achieve an end, I think. Thank you. Okay, so I'm sorry if you couldn't hear that, but you can you can still hear the message yourself by calling the phone number, and that phone number is um, 508-955-2174. So, if you could hear it, um, Mules... Uh, was talking to the agent that he met at the pickup location and he tried several different codes. The clue that we had of what the passcode was um, was what was the first or something like that. So we, people on eTARC were trying to figure out what the passcode was. It was probably, they thought that it was probably one of the first passcodes that was used on wakingtitan.com. So he tried 16, Orion, and Hyperion, which were some of the first passwords that were on the website, but apparently he got them wrong because she didn't seem to think those were correct. Um, but thankfully she still gave him the clue. I, I think now that the passcode was actually Portal because the first cassette tapes that were sent out had the secret word Portal on them and as well as tape one of 16 also had the word portal hidden on it. So that may have been it that, cause that was kind of the first password that we got and we had never used it. So, um, but unfortunately people didn't realize it in time. And so he didn't get to try that password, but thankfully she still gave him the, um, still gave him the clue possibly because he, he proved that he was connected to waking Titan. Um, and was the person that was supposed to receive the clue. So she still gave it to him. Um, and so the clue that she gave him was a piece of notebook paper with the words, 28 minutes of silence after the thief. And there was also a hand-drawn picture of a flower on the paper. 
uh, people figured out that a there was a movie named The Flower Thief, and the next movie that was made by the same guy was the movie Senseless. So Senseless is the password for the fifth triangle on WakingTitan.com. And the next uh, broadcast for Waking Titan will be on July 8th, uh, next week, uh, Saturday. And it will be on the radio radio show Howard Stern on Sirius XM 100 and 101. Now, of course, Howard Stern is a very famous uh, radio show host, so it's obviously a, a pretty big deal that they would get, you know, a big billing um, radio show like that. So obviously something exciting is going to happen when that video aired. Um, I will just say that uh, I am a little disappointed because the um, the the uh, broadcast from Superlumina on the radio show said that um, that the broadcast was from August of 2017. Now it might just be a coincidence. They were just saying a month from now to try and prove that it was from the future. But, of course, a lot of people are saying that this may be a clue for when the next No Man's Sky update is going to be. And, of course, for a long time, people have guessed that it would be August because that was when the game came out last year. So they think it's going to be an anniversary update, and so the update will come out um, in August. And this is kind of more confirmation that it will be in August since the broadcast talked about August of 2017. So I was a little disappointed because I was hoping that it would be in July, maybe when the last broadcast aired um, and the Atlas 65 website went up, that we would get the update. But we don't know for sure, but it seems a lot more likely now that it's going to be in August. But I'm still excited about Waking Titan and excited about the next broadcast because, like I said, it's going to be on Howard Stern, so it's probably going to be something pretty major. And it is the last website that we know about, atlas65.com. So it's kind of be it's going to be real exciting next week, regardless. So I'm still looking forward to it. So thank you for watching this Waking Titan report, and I will catch you in the next one.